I have two videos that are called four smart ways to use custom formatting instead of conditional formatting. This video is the fifth smart way and it was inspired by your comments. By the way, this is custom formatting. It's when you right mouse click on a cell, go to format cells and either select an existing custom format or create your own format. Why use custom formatting instead of conditional formatting? Well, number one is that when I did a performance test comparison, custom formatting was faster. Number two is that I find custom formatting much easier to set up. And three is that you don't have the problem of duplicating conditional formatting rules whenever you start to copy and paste cells around. Let me show you quickly what we did in the four smart ways tutorials. We use custom formatting to get this effect. If I right mouse click here and go to format cells or use the shortcut key control one, I can see that the formatting applied to it looks like this. Now there are two important concepts to remember. Custom formatting is cosmetics. It's not what you see inside the cell, it's how you've decided to dress up that number. And in this case, I've actually decided to dress up any positive numbers to look like a green, so that color 10 stands for green, a dark green, like you can see here, a green up arrow, and negative numbers have been dressed up to look like a red down arrow. And number two concept is the order that this works. The first one that you define before the semicolon is how positive numbers should be dressed up. Then it's how negative numbers should be dressed up. Then you can add another semicolon and define how you want zeros to be dressed up. And last is how you want text to be dressed up. Now we're used to seeing this for numbers, right? So if we want positive numbers to be formatted with a thousand separator, and negative numbers should be formatted in brackets and be shown as red. That's what we've most seen custom formatting used for, but the great thing is that you can use it to dress up your values in any way that you want. Just remember these two concepts. Now, if you need to review this, just go back to those two videos, or you can also go to the blog post and just quickly have a read through the post. It's been split to five different chapters, so you can just click on these to jump to the chapter or just scroll down. And here you can see that important concept, positive, negative, zero, and text. And we just start off with the simple examples and then we get more advanced with it. And on the bottom, you'll see the link to the video here and you can download the workbook here as well. And right here, you saw where we had that color 10, you can see the different types of colors that you can use right here. Now Excel also has inbuilt color referencing, so you can use the text red or green or yellow as well. But if you want different variations of the color, you can use these color codes and the full list is available from Microsoft with this link. Now one thing that most people don't know is that you can also use thresholds in there. So you can have an upper, lower and other threshold. It doesn't have to be positive, negative, zero, and text. The way you define the threshold is to use the square brackets, and then you use the greater than or lower than signs here. The problem with this method is that it's not a cell reference, right? So it's not dynamic. You actually have to input that value yourself inside the dialog box right here. That's the background. Now let's get to the questions. Michelle asked, I was wondering if you could use a cell reference instead of using this as fixed inside our custom formatting dialog box. Yes, you can do that. We just have to set it up a little bit different to what we had before. Let's do this example based on this data set. So that's similar to what we had before. I have actual previous year and I've calculated the deviation in this column. Now what I wanna do is to have my up and down arrows right here based on a threshold that I'm gonna define in the cell. And let's start off with 5% right here. First thing I'm gonna do is to bring in the symbols that I wanna use. And I wanna have the up 
and down arrows. I'm just going to go to insert symbols and insert them from here. Now the symbols that I use most are under Arial, Geometric Shapes, and you can see these up down arrows here. So let's go with this. Just make sure you're in an empty cell before you insert. And actually I'm going to add this as well. I might use it later and close this. Okay, so I have my symbols in here. I'm going to put the result right here so that we can compare our arrows to the actual deviation that we see in here. Now, the second step is to put numbers inside the cells that I want to disguise, right? Because remember, custom formatting is disguising values you have in cells. Without values, you have nothing to disguise. What type of values do we need? Well, we have three different conditions here. We have values that are greater than 5%. We want to show as the up arrow. Values that are less than minus 5%. We want to show as the down arrow. And everything else in between, in this example, let's say we just want to leave it out. We don't want any arrows for them. That means we have three different conditions. So we need three different types of values. And custom formatting allows us up to four, right? So we just need to use the first three. Basically, we need for the first condition to use some type of positive number, for the second condition, negative number, and for the third condition, we can put a zero in there. This means we can use an if formula here. Our logical test is to look at this number here and to compare it to the number that we have defined as our threshold. So if this number is greater than this number here, our threshold, and I'm planning to pull this formula down, so I have to fix the cell reference here, I'm just going to press F4, then I need to show a positive number. And this positive number can be any positive number. I can input a 1 here, or I can use the same number that I see here. They're both going to be positive. In this case, I'm just going to reference this one. Else, if this number is less than minus 5%, so I have to put a minus here, then reference E5 and use F4 to fully fix this, then I want to show a minus number. And again, here I can input a minus 1. And the reason I say 1 is just because 1 represents any minus number. In this case, you can pick anything. It can be minus 0 0.1, minus 2, minus 200, or we can reference that cell because that cell will be negative anyhow, right? So the idea is just to get a negative number in there. I'm going to go with D6 here. Otherwise, it should be a zero. And why zero? Because that's the third option I have inside custom formatting. So here I can't just pick any number, I do have to pick zero. I'm going to close and close the bracket, press enter, just pull this down. Let's just double check. So anything in between 5% and minus 5% should be zero. Anything less than minus 5% should show me a minus number. Anything above 5% should show me the plus number. So this looks good. Now I have my numbers in the cell. Now I can disguise them to the way I want them to look. So I'm going to copy the arrows that I'm going to use. And those are these two here. Just control C. Before I go inside my custom formatting dialog box, I'm going to highlight this, press control one, go down to custom. And now let's bring in the formatting. So first was how positive numbers should be formatted. And I'm going to go with color 10 here. So that's the dark green. This is the link to get all the color codes from the MSDN website. Then I'm going to paste in the arrows. The first one was the up arrow, so I don't need the second one. Then comes the semicolon. Then I want to define how negative values should be formatted. So I want them as red. I need the square bracket here. And to paste in the arrow, now I want the down arrow. And if I want to hide the zeros, all I have to do is put in the semicolon and not put anything for the zero argument here. I'm just going to leave it out and say, OK. OK, so now I get my up arrows, down arrows, and they are connected to this value. 
So if I change this to 12%, if I change it to 0%, I get everything. Change it to 4%, I get these. The main work here is this part, which is to come up with the right formula that's going to satisfy the arguments we need for custom formatting. Let's take a look at the other comments. Sukumoi asked, is there a way that we can make it dynamic? I want if the value is over average, it should show a green arrow. If it's below average, it should show red arrow. If it's the same as average, it should be like a bar, right? So this one follows the same logic as this one. Basically, you can either calculate the average in a separate cell and then reference that, or you can build it in inside your if formula. But the idea behind it is the same. Then Joe asked, in conditional formatting, I can set conditions. If it's between one to three, should be red, four to six green, seven to 10 yellow. Is that possible in custom formatting? Now, this is a similar question to Brandy's, who also asked if it's possible to do multiple conditions here. So between five to 10% should be red, for example, or three to five yellow and so on. And yes, up to four conditions is possible because custom formatting allows you to format four different types of values, right? So positive, negative, zero, and text. Now, all we have to do is to disguise our thresholds here as those types of values. So in this number two example here, we're gonna do just that. And in fact, we're gonna take it a step further and we're actually gonna do four conditions. I've put the symbol that I want to use in here and basically I've defined the thresholds and the color that I want for my thresholds right here. So anything between five to 10% should be light green, then it should be yellow, greater than 10% is dark green, and less than 3% should be red. So remember that in all these four different conditions, I might actually not have negative numbers. None of them need to be a zero or text. But that doesn't really matter because I just need to translate this condition to a positive number, then maybe the second condition to a negative number, the third condition to a zero, and the last condition to text, because that's what custom formatting needs. And here we just have to be smart with our if formula. Our logical test is going to be looking at this number, but now because we have a lower and an upper bound here, I'm going to use the AND function. And I'm going to check for two things. The first thing is that this number should be greater or equal than 5%. Now, obviously, you can put your numbers in separate cells and do sub-references, or you can type it in. In this case, I'm just going to type it in. The second condition is that this number needs to be less than or equal to my upper bound here, which is 10%. Now I can close the AND function. So if this applies, I want to show a positive number and it doesn't matter what positive number. So I'm just going to input a one. That's going to be my own flag for this scenario. Else, if, now again, we have a lower bound and an upper bound here. So I'm going to use the AND function again and check this number and see if it's greater than or equal to 3%. And the same number is less than or equal to 5%. I'm going to close the AND function. So if this happens, I want it to show it as a minus one, right? So that's the placeholder for the second custom formatting scenario. Now let's go to the next condition. If my value right here is greater than 10%, I want it to be, what was the other condition for custom formatting? Zero. Otherwise, so everything else below 3% should be a text. And that can be any text that you want to input. So I'm just going to put a T. That's going to be my personal placeholder for text. And let's just close the brackets here. Okay, so let's just quickly check if this is right. Minus 1% gets a T. Yes, that was the last condition here. Let's just drag this down. 
25% gets zero. That was the greater than 10% conditions. Now, before I go to the custom formatting dialog box, I'm going to copy the symbol that I want to use, highlight this area that I want to apply custom formatting to, use control one, go all the way down to custom. And here we can decide what we want to show. First one was positive numbers. I want a light green. A nice light green is color 43. You can also use green and that's a very bright type of green. So for this, I'm going to then paste in my symbol. Then the next one was negative numbers. I want them to be yellow. And here I'm going to use yellow and paste in my symbol. Next is dark green. And a dark green, I'm going to use that color 10 that I've been using before. Paste in the symbol. The last one is red. So wherever it's going to see T in there, it's going to format it as red. Paste in my symbol here and let's say OK. And I get my symbols. Let's just update the formatting here. OK, so everything now that's above 10% is going to be this dark green. 5 and 10% is the light green. The yellow is the 4% and that's between 3 to 5%. So that looks good. And everything else, whether it's negative or it's positive, but it's below 3% is going to be red, right? So this is how you can use custom formatting for multiple conditions. And of course, you can use this in a dynamic well as well, as long as you input your values in cells instead of typing them in here. So that's one more way you can use custom formatting. You have the four conditions at your disposal. You just need to get creative with them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing if you like to receive updates when new videos come out.